I want to take some time to talk about my man, Bernard Sanders, who, let me just say, at Joe Biden's inauguration looked like an absolute chad. Uh, this is kind of the energy that I'm feeling right now. He represents all of us. And I am confident that this image will be memed uh, for years to come, which is great because it's uh, it's fantastic. Um, but Bernie Sanders is an important individual, uh, not just because of the influence that he has and the platform that he has, uh, but because he is going to be the uh, Senate Budget Committee chairman, which is really important because he actually cares about the American people. And to care about the American people and simultaneously be in a position where you can affect change in a meaningful way, we haven't seen this in quite some time, and I'm really looking forward to it. So in an interview with ABC News, he had a message for Republicans, or rather, he had a warning for Republicans that I'm really glad to see. Like, he needs to say this. Somebody needed to say this. But basically, simply put, he says to Republicans, look, we are going to give you the opportunity to work with us. But if you do not work with us, then we are going to steamroll you. Take a look. I have no problem with reaching out to Republicans. I would prefer to do it that way. But if we hear very early on that Republicans do not want to act in a way that meets the needs of working people in this country or the middle class, sorry, we're going to do it alone. Uh, the truth of the matter uh, is that Republicans use budget reconciliation over the years to provide massive tax breaks to the rich to try to repeal the Affordable Care Act. We're going to use it to protect the working families uh, and the middle class. That is exactly what I want to hear Chairman Sanders say. Because Republicans, they used reconciliation. They, they did everything in their power to accomplish what they wanted. You know, they, they approved a Supreme Court justice a week before the election. So it's time that Democrats actually play hardball. Now, look, I think it's reasonable that at first Joe Biden is coming in and saying we're going to we're going to try to pass things like, you know, another stimulus package with a 60 vote threshold. We're not going to opt for reconciliation immediately. And that's what Bernie Sanders is saying, too, uh, because you're giving them a chance to try to work with you. However, if they shoot you down, if they slap down the olive branch that you are extending, waste no time, move right on without them, because then you can basically bludgeon them in the midterm elections. If you're Joe Biden, you could say, look, we tried to work with Republicans, but unfortunately, they didn't want to work with us. So alone, we had to pass a stimulus package along party lines. We're the ones who gave you uh, $1,000 or $2,000. We did X, Y, and Z for you. We're the ones who administered, you know, vaccines in a more competent manner, and they didn't help us. They were salty because Donald Trump lost the election. They refused to work with us, and so we had to do it alone. Like, use this and actually play politics. Now, I have no confidence that Joe Biden is going to want to play politics in that way because I think he, at his core, is pretty conservative. But Bernie Sanders, as budget committee chairman, he actually has a lot of influence. And so if he wants to pass something using reconciliation, that's just, you know, 51 votes, he can do it. And his agenda is very ambitious and you love to see it. So in an op-ed for CNN, he actually wrote about this uh, saying, amid so much economic suffering and despair, it is imperative that Democrats pass a bold and aggressive economic agenda within the first 100 days of Joe Biden's presidency. And as Warren Gunnels reports, that includes boost checks of $2,000, a $15 an hour minimum wage, emergency Medicare for all, double community health centers, lower drug prices, don't tax emergency unemployment benefits, paid family leave, universal health care, rebuild America, combat climate change, tax the rich, save USPS, and more. And again, this is all what Bernie Sanders wants to happen within the first 100 days. And he's saying, look, as budget committee chairman, we're in a position to where we can make this happen. I am going to allow votes uh, on things like this to pass. All we need is a simple majority, 50 plus one votes. Kamala would be the tiebreaker. So this is absolutely brilliant. When you have someone like Bernie Sanders in this position, there's no excuse for Democrats. There is no excuse for Democrats. So if they don't capitalize on this unique opportunity that they haven't had since, you know, the 2000s when Obama was first sworn in, then, you know, that's on them. If you fail, you can't blame Republicans here. You cannot blame Republicans. All eyes are on you. Accountability is going to be on your shoulders. So if you fail, 
you know, there's nobody to blame but yourselves. So I'm glad that Bernie Sanders is um uh, is uh, in this position. You know, I think it's smart. It's smart politics to basically say, look, we tried to allow Republicans to work with us and have some input. And now I don't want them to have input, realistically speaking. But if they shoot you down, I think that makes for a really good situation. It, you can use that politically to beat them in the midterm. So we'll see. I don't necessarily expect very savvy politics from corporate Democrats like Joe Biden or Kamala Harris. But I do think that Bernie Sanders is a little bit more strategic, and I think that he can push them in a better direction. And if we don't get all of this, then we better get at least half of this. Like, I think during a pandemic, we should expect more. We should ask and demand more from our government. Because if you can't, you know, uh, serve the American people when we need you the most, then you're really proving that you are useless. And your legitimacy will go down as a direct result. So, you know, look. We'll see. We'll wait and see. But I do feel a little bit more optimistic because Bernie Sanders is in that position. Of course, I would have preferred if he was uh, the president, but that's neither here nor there. He will be the budget committee chairman, and I fully expect him to you know, utilize the power that he has to do as much as he possibly can to improve the lives of Americans.